So this is a quick start guide to help you figure out what to do with the Oink for Influencers Toolkit whenever you first download it. There's a lot of different features and functionalities, but there are a few core things that everybody needs to do right off the bat before you start doing anything else in the extension. It doesn't matter if you're a free user or a pro user, these things I'm gonna show you are applicable to everybody. So let's jump into the extension and get you started. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do whenever you get into the extension is you're gonna to go to your storefront and you're gonna click the storefront fetch button right here. The storefront fetch is a function that's gonna go through your storefront and it's gonna look through all of the different types of content you have created and, cr and collect different pieces of information about each piece of content, the products you have tagged, their timestamps, their titles, their video URLs, etc., And then that information is going to be used for pretty much everything that happens within the extension. So the, the storefront fetch is uh, imperative to do first. Now, I pretty much only do videos. Whenever I make a picture and I upload it, that picture is just a thumbnail of a video I've already made. So it's not unique. It doesn't have a unique product. But if you do idea lists and those have unique products tagged that you're not already doing videos for or shoppable pictures that have unique products that are not tagged elsewhere in your storefront, then you'll want to go ahead and fetch those too. So you're going to click both of these things here and then click your fetch storefront ASINs. I don't use those, so I'm not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and press this button right here. Now, the first time that you run this, it's going to go through your entire storefront. So depending on how many pieces of, of content you have, this could take you a couple of minutes. Uh, for me, though, I've already done this. Once you do this once, it doesn't need to go through your whole storefront again. It will only look for the newest stuff that you have added since your last fetch. Now, that being said, I still recommend probably doing a complete fetch once a week just to make sure you're always up to date in your storefront because sometimes Amazon will change some stuff on your older content and you don't know it. So, But for the most part, every time you do a fetch, it's just going to get your newest stuff that you have added in since your last full fetch. By the way, if you do want to do a complete full fetch again, all you need to do is click your clear shop ASINs. Once you do that, refresh your page and then click the new fetch and it'll go through the fetch process and getting everything on your storefront. So that's the first thing. Everybody needs to get a storefront fetch completed. Now we're gonna go over to your orders page. So what we wanna do on the orders page is we wanna fetch the products which we have already purchased from our Amazon account. Because look, if you already own these products and if there happens to be a Creator Connections campaign available for those products and you forgot to make a video for it, you need to make a video for that. And sometimes those things that we have purchased for ourselves fall through the cracks and we forget about them, especially over time. So we're going to fetch our order history. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to go through and you're going to select your time frame. Now, because Amazon sets it up like this, you can only do it one year at a time. I would recommend just starting at like 2020, do the last five years or so. Select your year. Once your year is selected, then all you have to do is click the fetch order history. It's going to go through your order history for that particular time frame. And whenever it's done, it's going to give you a pop up and tell you how many unique IDs that it fetched, right? Now, keep in mind, it's not gonna give you all of the IDs that it fetched. It's only giving you the, the unique IDs. And that's the way that this whole extension works. It's always only going to look at unique IDs. It doesn't wanna check the same IDs over and over again. That doesn't help anything. So in this particular case, it says there were zero. I had 46 duplicates because I already went through this process. So this lets us know that this is done. So what we wanna do is we wanna close this. Now that we have our storefront fetched, we have our order history fetched, we wanna go over to Creator Connections and see if we can get some campaigns. Because look, if there are campaigns available for stuff that we have made videos for, we want that money in our pocket, right? So let's go over to Creator Connections next. So now that we're on Creator Connections, what we wanna do is we wanna check both our storefront information that we fetched and our order history and see if we can get some campaigns and make some additional commissions. So first you're gonna click the Creator Connections check right here. Now in this pop-up box, I wanna point out first here at the top, we have this section right here. Whenever you do your cross-reference, whenever it gives you your final results, it's gonna give you results in two sections. It's gonna give you a new opportunity section. The new opportunities means we found campaigns available for IDs and those IDs didn't already have a campaign. They're basically, those are IDs had nothing on them already. These are brand new campaign opportunities for that particular product. We also have a second section that we are going to show you in the final results, which is gonna show you better opportunities. This means, we found an ID that you already had a campaign accepted for, but we found a better campaign, either with higher commissions or equal commissions, but a better end date. So there's two different sections there. So if you do not enable this, you can. it's gonna show you that final results page and you'll go through everything manually. You can click each ID one at a time and decide, You know, look it up in the creator connections thing, see what the campaign is and decide if you wanna accept them or not. Or this is what I do is if there is a new or better opportunity, I want them every single time. So I just do automatically accept the new campaigns and it does all that work for me at the end. It'll still show you the final results, but this does all of the auto accepting of those things for me. So I'm gonna enable this. 
If you do the idealist and the shoppable pictures, like we said before, you're going to enable one of these here too. Again, I do not do that, so I'm not going to do that. It will add on a little bit of time to the end of this particular process, but um, that, that's where you're going to do that. Now, three buttons. Check your storefront IDs, check your order history IDs, and check content gap IDs. We're not going to talk about this one here today. We're just going to be doing these, these two right here, storefront and order history. But very quickly before we do that, I want to show you the timer estimate here at the bottom. In the extension, there are two different versions. There is a free version of the extension and a pro version of the extension. And the, the free version has to check each ID one at a time in the uh, in Creator Connections. The more content you have, the longer it's going to take. So for me, you can see here, my storefront check is going to take almost 200 minutes because I have like 3,000 unique IDs. Whereas with the pro version, you can see it's a much slower time. I st we still check them one at a time, but it's more of a direct communication with Amazon so we get that information faster. So depending on which one you have is how much you can expect to run this. If you end up doing the free version, whenever this is running, make sure that this page stays visible. Don't close it, don't go to a different tab. Usually I would let it run overnight and let it, let it do its thing. If you end up navigating away from it, it's going to stall out because Chrome thinks that this is not a visible page anymore. So keep this page up whenever you're running this. So what we wanna do first, I am gonna do the check storefront IDs. We're gonna click this button here. And so now what's happening is it's going through everything, looking for everything on my storefront to see if there are available campaigns for this. And you can see here, it's doing a counter basically in real time, showing you how many it's checked and how many matches it has found so far. Always a little bit of a video. If you want to watch something like that, you can click that and it'll open up in a new tab. And it won't disrupt this particular process. And then you just let the process play out. Whenever it gets to the end, it'll show you a final result. If there are no results, it'll tell you there's nothing that it found. But if there are, it'll again, break it down into two different sections, the new opportunity and the uh, better opportunity. And if you're auto accepting like me, it'll do all that for you. And you can certainly go and try to double check it and make sure that it did everything for you and did all the auto accept. But this is what I do every single time. This is the first thing that you should be doing. And conversely, the second thing you should be doing while this is running here, um, is do the check order history IDs. And again, I'm doing the auto accept on this, right? So I'm clicking that and then don't run these at the same time. That's just for the sake of this video. Normally this would not be running. You wanna do them one at a time. But I'm gonna do the check order histories ID. It's gonna run the exact same function, cross-referencing what it found against creator connections. It's gonna give you the final output here. And then you're gonna be able to find your new campaigns available through there. These are the first two things everybody should be doing in the extension. There are other bells and whistles, obviously the check content gap here, but these are the first two things that everybody should be doing in the extension. So it doesn't matter if you're a pro subscriber or not, these are the first steps that everybody should be taking because this is where the primary bulk of the additional money that you're gonna be able to make using the extension is going to come from. And what I would probably recommend with these things is that for me, I run these checks every couple of days but I am a pro user, so it doesn't take me a lot of time. If you're a free user, because that can be a little bit time consuming, you may wanna spread that out based off of how many pieces of content you have to maybe like twice a week or something like that. If you're a pro user, you can basically run it once a day and it doesn't hardly take up any amount of time. But keeping this consistently updated, both the storefront fetch, like I said before, you wanna probably do a full fetch like once a week and then you can do the interval fetches in between there whenever you add a little piece of content here and there. You wanna keep that up to date and also make sure that your Creator Connections campaigns are being run multiple times a week. For me, again, I'm running it pretty much every single day, but if you're a free user, try to run it about twice a week if you can, and that's gonna basically give you the best chance of staying up to date with the campaigns that are currently available for you so you're not leaving money on the table because that's what we're trying to do. Try to take money from the table and put it back in your pocket with the Oink extension. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. And if you have issues, as always, make sure you leave a message for me. You can always DM me or send me an email or whatever. The contact information is built within the extension itself on the top right, click account and then click help. So thank you guys very much. Looking forward to hearing more about the money that you're making using the Oink extension. We'll see you on the next video as always. Peace out.